gross, dude. So unimaginably gross. But also, of course, like the fact that there's also a uh, techno a blasting as well makes this so uniquely, so uniquely uh, Israel. I have not watched this yet. No, the era of war crime influencers from Ugopnik, friend of the show, made this one day ago. Uh, I do want to watch it. Let's take a look. Is there TOS in this chatters? Ugopnik also now a Twitch streamer as well. Ugopnik Twitch. Mike watched it the other day. Okay, I got to pee. Hold on. Old people like myself tend to say that everything was better back in the day. I'm more of the the kids are all right crowd. Hell, I'm a kid myself to an extent, but one thing is undeniable. It was it was different. The internet was different. I used to think it was far more raw and uncensored, filled with shit that has probably left millions of kids with untreatable, unintentional PTSD. We had websites like Live Leaks, where you could find everything from cartel, ISIS, white supremacists, and other kinds of gore videos, as long as you knew how to press the 18 plus button. Social media influencers in particular were finding their footing. It was mostly innocent little content, talking about hobbies or interests, educational content, or just the usual flexing of wealth or physical fitness and beauty. There were two internets, and while one would sometimes leak into the other with random gang shootings popping up after you scroll past your grandma's kitty pictures over on Facebook, the truly messed up shit, war in particular, was on its own independent part of the web. Still very accessible, mind you, but limited to those who looked for it. Contrastingly, today, this sort of content has not only found its footing on mainstream platforms from TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but it has birthed its own category of content creators, what we will call war crime influencers. Not normal what's going on, but guys, we are going to win. We are together. We're strong. <laughs> The worst thing I could see on my timeline back in the day was a Logan Paul video. Now I casually see shit like this. <laughs> So one thing that I want to talk about, one thing that I want to talk about here is this. We often forget how violent of a culture America is, right? And I think that there is a, there is a real impact that the violence that we dish out overseas has on our collective consciousness, okay? You can't get away with being a violent imperial force that destroys lives and livelihoods and then permanently justifies that as though it's an act of good that we are engaging in and not have cultural ramifications here internally. That violence comes back and haunts us as well, okay? I do. I do believe that. And I think that the same attitude is now being plastered all over Israel. And the same thing is happening in real time, but in a much faster way because of the fact that you can just basically telegraph every single thing that you're doing in war. You can basically film yourself doing all of the, um, you're, you're basically filming yourself doing all of these awful things. And that creates this normalizing effect of this kind of violence because there's a bunch of people that also turn around and justify it. Anytime you mention, anytime you mention this kind of thing, there are at least 10 people minimum that come in and defend it like this video I want you to repeat after me just how I do it ready uh the video of like uh Palestinians in the West Bank being apprehended in this way and being blasted with music being a torturous condition because you as the occupying power you as the person who have who has detained another have all of the responsibility to treat them like a human being 
All of this would be torturous. This is conditions that are torturous. It's psychopathic to do it. It's additionally psychopathic to do it and blast it on the timeline. And yet when you show them this and you try to describe it, many people will say, those guys are terrorists, dog. And also what's so, what's torturous about listening to music? Like doing that sort of thing and like defending that sort of thing breaks you, okay? If you see this and you immediately rush to defend it, you have now lost a part of your humanity, okay? The goal here is to humiliate the person that you have apprehended. Even if they were literal terrorists, even if they were definitely terrorists, which these guys most likely are not, statistically speaking, because these are West Bank uh, guys that the Israeli occupying force is apprehending, okay? And those guys are just unlawfully detained permanently sometimes, okay? But even if they were terrorists, doing this to a terrorist is still torturous and it takes in defending these actions and trying to normalize these actions takes a piece of your soul. You've become less of a human when you do that. Okay. Coats, the corrupting impact of violence on the soul. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about this quite a bit. I talk about this all the time with respect to American culture, but I think it's important to understand here, right? That it is, uh, it is very much existing in Israel as well. And I don't think people recognize that. When you, become, when you become desensitized to this kind of violence, you've become less human. You become way closer to the terrorist that you think all of these uh, enemies, supposed enemies of yours are. You become the actual terrorist in that situation. All right, gentlemen, I want you to repeat after me just how I do it. Ready? You see, the leak in live leak kind of tells you that most of these videos were uploaded by a third party after they uncovered it somewhere in the depths of the web or in IRL. Cartel bosses wanted fear, sure, but not TikTok followers. ISIS wanted respect and panic, but not to pop off their online brand. Today, we have people who, using their own name and often face, proudly post their heinous acts of war, often criminal, as a means to normalize what they do, get clout or fangirly adoration. Nowhere has this been more prevalent than in the IDF. Why do you think COD and other hyper-violent games are mainstream? They don't cause this, but they're certainly reflective of it. No, I think we have a phenomenal capability of like making a distinction between a video game and a, and a movie and in, in real life violence. The major problem here is that this is real life violence. Okay. That's what makes it actually fucking gross. There's a difference between dehumanizing your opponent with the sole reasons, the sole goal of like doing genocide upon them versus like consuming art of some variety. Whether we recognize it or not, we make that distinction. That's why you can so easily do things in Grand Theft Auto that you would never in a million years do in the real world because you don't even think about it as like being anything but a video game. And by the way, there is empirical evidence to suggest this for the record. I know that the chatter wasn't saying video game violence causes IRL violence, by the way. Um, I get that. He's saying that it is reflective of like the kind of content that we want to consume, but violent content has always existed. Uh, I don't think that that is like, I think violence is a, is an inherent part of humanity. It happens all the time. And, uh, and it has existed in, in freaking cave paintings, you know? So it's always going to exist in our art. I don't think it's like reflective of anything beyond the fact that it is genuinely just a part of our existence. But I feel like the media always glorifies the type of violence which makes it an easier pill to swallow when it happens IRL. Well, the point I'm trying to make is that this is real violence. This is real propaganda. This is real dehumanization. That's when it's different. This is, it's, there's a difference between watching a snuff film and watching a movie. Guys, the difference is that's a real thing that happened to a real person. That's why it's supposed to be traumatizing. Okay. That is the distinction. I believe you got is trying to make here as well. For those of you who don't understand live leak is a leak because it's not meant to be out there. Okay. Ball. 
global condemnation by almost all mainstream internationally accredited civil rights organizations of the so-called conflict in Gaza, which has cost the life of over 20,000 Palestinians, have been unilateral, yet nobody acts. The call for ceasefire comes from billions of people from all over the globe, and yet nobody acts. 80% of all world governments have formally called for a ceasefire, and yet nobody acts. And now, even after all of that injustice, we are forced to watch the perpetrators gloat about their actions daily on our timelines as an online army of absolute freaks proceeds to post themselves taking immense pleasure in the suffering they're inflicting, all while no platform dares to touch or remove them. <laughs> How did we get here? It's kind of interesting to see, like, um, you know how sometimes I get mad at liberals, especially rad libs, that will take on a lie being told about liberals in general by conservatives, like, oh, they're so, they're such die hard woke schools woke schools who have no joy in their lives and they hate joy and they want to rob the world of its joy and then some liberals will turn around and behave exactly like that meme where they'll be like no 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 i do want to fucking rob the joy of the world right and i get so mad when i see that the idf is doing that permanently okay people will say the idf is violent the idf is behaving uh, in a way that is like I impossible to deal with it's just a sequence of war crimes one after the other they're engaging in ethnic cleansing. And then these guys will go, no, 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 we are. Like that guy just basically admitted that, yes, we lie about the Palestinians. And yes, we also then kill the Palestinians. And yes, we kill their civil society for funsies. It's vice signaling. That particular army from that particular apartheid state has been always known for its uh, love of posting. And shitty ass techno music too. It's just like such a meme. We did some table talks and we took too many shots. Think we kiss for life for God. Last Friday night, yeah, we mixed our credit cards. I got kicked out of the bar, so we hit the ball of blood. And while it was almost slightly distasteful as these videos would go up in between random acts of ethnic based violence, it's, it is kind of funny, like. God, Israelis love, like the IDF especially, they love one, taking like, obviously doing ethnic cleansing here. The IDF loves doing ethnic cleansing while simultaneously basically stealing everything from the people that they're ethnically cleansing, like the music, the culture, the art, the food, while also simultaneously wiping it out and then putting a shitty ass dance over it. It is, it is like watching white supremacy not saying that israel is white obviously but it is like uh, almost perfectly analogous to what like white people have done to black people in the united states of america in england like but especially in the united states of america because the united states of america is a settler colony so it's like almost perfectly analogous and it is this idea of like wiping out black people and and having black people like redefine cultural norms for themselves uh, in the aftermath of, of chattel slavery and then just like taking all of these taking all of these like cultural norms Katy Perry is Palestinian yeah I'm talking about Katy Perry thank you for understanding the point that I'm making I know I know the song was a Katy Perry song with an artistic rendition of Katy Perry it's almost a perfect study it's almost a perfect study of like watching how supremacist cultures that are engaging in acts of like uh wanton w uh, violence upon an indigenous population end up stealing the cultural norms while also erasing it and then like making a shittier version of uh that culture that has been around for thousands of years at this point it is almost it, it like the funnier versions of this when all is said and done is is can be immediately seen in the likes of like miley cyrus twerking or ben shapiro rapping and claiming that he's now a rapper or that he is like, he can jokingly be like, I hate black people. Well, very seriously be like, I hate black people, but then also be like, I'm rapping and I'm rapping better than black people can rap. See, this is your medium. It sucks. I can dominate it myself 
while not even trying that hard. That in and of itself, obviously, is like a like a way more, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, way more diluted version of the thing that I'm mentioning. But you see it. You see it happen with uh, uh, black culture being commoditized, stolen from black people, and and the things that uh, many have attacked black people for. They turn around and make it fashionable when white people do it. And Israel is basically doing that in real time right now. It's almost like a, I don't know, almost like a, like a cultural study that you can watch in real time and experience in real time happening and unfolding right in front of our eyes. Exactly what this uh, country did as a settler colony originally to the indigenous population and also the the black population as well what we've done to black people in general and continue to do to black people now so yeah interesting stuff violence being committed on the streets it was mostly just that dancing i mean yeah the idf has always been very good at pitching their army to westerners as one being of quote unquote higher caliber than those of their neighbors look at us we're so silly and chill we have vegan food that we serve because we care about animals and ethics we have all these beautiful people in uniform it almost looks like we're edgy new york content creators not a brutal occupying army Speaking of someone who's not a brutal occupying army, just a guy who posts on the internet, are we really going to let these people have more subscribers than me? Damn, dude. That's like that's a way weaker segue than my top of the hour ad break debates, okay? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Subscribe to Ugopnik as well, obviously, on YouTube. He's a great content creator. He also streams on Twitch now, Ugopnik Twitch. But also subscribe to me for $5 or for free at the top of the hour if you don't want to see the three-minute ad break. That's right. At the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three-minute ad break now. That can't be right. So go on, press the subscribe button right now and contribute to less war crime endorsing videos on this big little platform of ours. Anyways, I can't believe I'll say this, but I miss those little cringy dance videos because what we have now is far more mask off than any journalist could dig up. Now, people have been recording themselves doing vile shit in conflict zones since we invented the camera. This is nothing new. But the total sheer level of shamelessness to put it on platforms accessible by billions is something I hadn't seen, well, ever. I can only guess where this audacity to post shit like this comes from. My name? name? What I suspect motivates such open flaunting of pure spite and hate through physical acts, mind you, much worse than just verbal, is the internalized notion this whole army has, and even the state, that they're completely an... Oh, by the way, while we were talking about this, the U.S. attacks have officially begun. U.S. official confirms strikes occurring in Iraq and Syria. Eight targets is just first of many courses so far. Utterly untouchable. And can you blame them? Look at what's been going on for three months now, and except for a few boys with choppers over in Yemen and a few corporate boycotts, there has been no, absolutely zero consequences to speak of. When you think you're untouchable, then you have no reason to believe in consequences. That, or you are so certain that you'll be the victor who writes the history, that you see this as not much more than just gathering good old trophies. So fucking gross, dude. It's so unimaginably gross. But also, of course, like the fact that there's also a uh, techno, like shitty ass techno blasting as well, makes this so uniquely, so uniquely uh, Israel. You can't, you can't have it be a, an Israeli staple without shitty fucking EDM, dude. Jesus Christ. It's gotten so bad that the military probably has concerted efforts to stop it. And the fact it can't, while being quite literally the kings of military PR, tells you just how surface level the shit we're seeing really is, since that's the only stuff that actually gets through. 
I mean, we're talking about a country which has a whole department of internet scavengers that both post, manipulate, and push rhetorics online, as well as a country with defined organs to getting people thrown out of their jobs, sometimes rightfully for expressing anti-Semitic lunacy, but other times simply due to their... I wonder how many, I wonder how many Hasbro mothers that come in here and like try to duke it out over and over again, or what kind of impact that like Hasbro operations has on like the minds of Redditors in general, who are obviously very susceptible to very, very susceptible to like, um, looking at a situation and being like, well, a lot of people also feel that this is the correct thing. So I guess maybe I also believe it. Come to consider their support of Palestinian rights. But enough about the army. What about the internet's role in this whole thing? The reason I mentioned that I no longer believe that the internet used to be more raw and uncensored in the past is because we don't even notice when something is raw and uncensored nowadays. People aren't getting long-term scarring from violent footage anymore because it's absolutely everywhere. In the last three months alone, without even looking for it, I've seen countless death and destruction, and likely so have you. This, as messed up as it sounds, is the good side of this whole story. Thanks to the internet, we're able to get insight far quicker into what's happening on the ground in some of the most hellish war zones on earth. But while we have access to it, this very same constant exposure makes us less receptive of it. No shock value, no anger. That old saying, one dead man is a tragedy, a thousand is a statistic, can very easily be applied to how we browse the web. You get shocked once or twice over the same thing, and then it just turns into a sort of torture corn experience for you. While those very same people, in their flesh and blood, never stopped going through the horrors on the ground. The question I won't be answering because there's not enough data to actually answer it keeps lingering in my head. Are we more empathetic of the horrors of the system, this world, the monsters in it, because we can see them through our screens, or are we more distant than ever? The millions of people on the streets calling for an end to this barbarity give me optimism, but it really is too early to tell. If it's that desynthesized for us, what do you think it's like for the so-called soldiers on the- I feel like ever since the Ukraine war and videos of drone footage blown up Russian soldiers has gotten way worse. The first time I think we got to like get real time combat footage that we cared about collectively in the Western world was Russia, Ukraine, I think. Obviously it existed in the, in Syria, it existed with like ISIS doing this kind of thing. But before, it was like still, in my opinion, relegated to like the darker corners of the internet of people who were like kind of pervy about that sort of stuff, right? Like the way that this turned into like mass uh, readily consumable uh, content for, for like m available content for ma readily consumable for mass consumption uh, is like turning away from like being live leak shit to, to directly something that like the average normie has encountered online, whether it be on TikTok or whether it be on Reddit, was I think Russia, Ukraine. It has existed, of course, because like I said, war has been the same. All war is a crime, but the way we see and the way we perceive war has changed in dramatic ways. It used to just be something that you didn't accidentally stumble upon, but like you had to search for it and see these like crazy videos. Even with Syria, it was still like 4chan. But now, because of the 4chanification of Reddit and Twitter and even TikTok in some ways, you see it everywhere. Normies are watching it. And I think the turning point was Ukraine. This has been a slow burn since Vietnam. It cranked to 11 recently, but this desensitization is not new. No, my point is, I, I don't know if I'm making uh, my point clear here because clearly there are still people who are confused. All of this stuff has always used war crimes has all have always happened. Some of it even filmed. Okay. But the limitations of technology and the fact that like social media was not readily available, obviously, or did not exist before the internet. Um, and before social media platforms would like allow this sort of thing. This was not something you could easily find. Okay. This was not something you could easily find.
And it certainly, as a consequence of technology and, and social media, became more readily available, but it still was not like accessible to mass consumption until I would say Reddit, the 4 chanification of like social media sites, especially Reddit with Ukraine. Okay. And, and this becoming something that you don't just like see through a filter in mainstream media like CNN. Okay. But something that you could literally stumble upon, even if you weren't looking for it the ground committing these same acts normalized to the point of posting means it's the same to them like posting a new watch a night into town or a wedding photo social media is our compass to what is seen as standard as normal so to say if you're posting it for the whole world to see then you must not feel ashamed of it hell you might even feel proud of it and for you not to feel shame towards something you must find it to be normal well tell me how can someone who posts this be normal? Like, in my opinion, one of the versions of this that, like, normalizes war and war crimes in general is, like, the age-old thing where you go and, like, you, you sign an artillery shell or you sign a missile with your name. Many people have done this. I think it's, like, one of the grossest things you can do, right? It's one of the grossest things you can do. You're basically saying, like, this missile that is going to literally kill children, okay? I'm co-signing it. I think it's awesome. I personally find that to be genuinely awful, okay? But this is a continuation of that. It's almost as if the general need to post is unironically, and sorry, but this is genuinely funny. It's almost as if the general need to post is more important to some people than staying out of jail. It's not the internet's fault. It's not some blood or culture thing either. It's a state deepening into fascistic genocidal fervor, which leads to a change in what is defined as normal that turns its perceived enemy into a dehumanized punching bag. Yeah, this is like their, this is their Arab face, by the way. This is like ironic because they're fucking Arabs. They're just Arab Jews. How do you, how do you literally lose sight of what you're doing? Like, how do you... How do you unironically how do you unironically engage in this level of uh this level of like racism when you yourself are literally Arab? Okay. They're not their European colonists. Man, shut up. That's not fucking true. Not everything has to be understood from the incredibly American framework of like white guy from Europe is bad versus uh, you know, against the marginalized indigenous population of, like, non-whites. No. They are white. The fuck are you on? Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my fucking God. Israel has a ginormous population of Arab Jews. They are simply classified as Jews and classified differently than Muslim and Christian Arabs in the country. That does not change the reality that they are literally still fucking Arab. That's why if nobody was wearing their gear, okay, it would be virtually impossible to tell uh, the, the, the Arab citizens, okay, the Arab Jews versus the Palestinian Arabs apart. No, it's not 20% of Arab Jews, 20% uh, of Arab Jews as far as I remember. No, it's more than that. I think it's a majority now. People think like all the Jews are Ashkenazi or something, like the, the white Jews, like the Polish, Ukrainian... Like those guys are, those guys are not like, they, they don't comprise the majority of, of Jews in, in Israel. Okay. I mean, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's the Arab Jews that are the Mizrahi Jews that are, uh, uh, yeah, 20% is just Palestinian citizens of Israel. So it's the Muslim and Christian, uh, Arabs, many of the Mizrahi Jews are that are from Iraq and shit, literally just Arabs, where the term Arab is practically synonymous with Palestinian and Israel. That's what I mean. Itamar Ben-Gvir is Iraqi and Kurdish, okay? 
it's just odd to see it's odd to see like this level of distinction between like two people that are not distinct from one another at all other than religion okay i guess it's like uh you know the balkans kind of like that but i don't know enough about the dehumanization practices that like serbs engaged in or the dehumanization practices that even the ottoman empire or turks engaged in against like armenians okay so i don't know i don't know how they like made their minds up that these people were like somehow different okay but stop looking at this from the framework of like white versus non-white because that's not the case you're orientalizing distinct ethnicities in my opinion also maybe our conceptions of white vary wait what what are you talking about? No, you're the one who's doing that. If you say that Israel is just like white and it's made up of white people, you are the one who is doing that. I'm right. You're wrong in this circumstance. Mizrahi Jews are, are created as a distinction that the Israeli state has made because it's a, a Jewish supremacist ethno state. And it is a distinction that the Jewish uh, supremacist ethno state that wants to maintain being a Jewish supremacist ethno state that has found a different classification for non Jews, claiming that Jews who are of Arab descent from, that come from Arab countries that are just Arab, they consume Arab food, they are like their, their families have lived in, in, in the MENA region for generations, not in Israel directly. But in many instances, uh, other parts of MENA that have a distinct cultural, uh, uh, distinct cultural touch points that they brought back, like cultural practices they brought back into Israel, like all of that gets uh, uh, put under the banner of, of being Mizrahi Jew, even though you are still fucking Arab. Just nowadays, it also posts about it. Over 30 years ago now, many people calling themselves patriots from every corner of the little peninsula that birthed and bred me, the Balkans, did unspeakable things in the name of this or that cause. Hatred, revenge, or straight-up sociopathy unlocked by the total moral free-for-all, which is war. Many of these same men recorded home videos of their deeds, thinking they're untouchable, thinking they'll be victors. And while many remain free to this day, a lot of them are rotting in jail or in the ground, because their vanity reached such heights that they recorded their ungodly actions. Receipts, ladies, gentlemen, and tovarishi, eventually fall out of our pockets, and the IDF has a lot of receipts. Yeah. As of the making of this video, in a case against Israel by South Africa in the International Court of Justice, these very same videos have played a large role in depicting this terrifying bloodlust exhibited by those very same war crime influencers. At the end of the day, who cares about our discomfort while watching any of this stuff? Who cares about consumerist social media? I haven't found one source that suggests more than 25% of Israelis are Arab. Yes, dude, because you are literally... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're saying Sephardic aren't Arabs. The majority are Ashkenazi. Persian Jews aren't Arab, buddy. It's 20%, not even close to a majority. It's not a majority. It's the plurality. My literal shaisa has more accurate takes. What is happening, dude? Can, can an Israeli guy just not be so fucking phenomenally racist? What's happening? What do you mean, uh-oh? You literally keep Googling the same thing over and over again, okay? And, and not recognizing that that distinction that you're bringing up is literally, uh-oh, I'm Irish and black. Wait, what? You lived in Israel for four years, but you're... It's mostly white. I've lived there for four years. I'm Irish and black. First of all, I don't give a fuck what your background is. Your brain is uh, permanently and irreparably broken, it seems. Okay. Yes, sir. Called the Foreign Service. Oh, God. You're such a gross piece of shit. Either you're just lying or I don't know what the fuck is wrong with your brain. Okay. You called me an Israeli, bro. Yeah, you were talking about like living there for four years. 
So yes, that was my suspicion. They didn't realize that you were such a fucking dick rider that you went and joined the foreign service. You trigger the crazies? Yeah, two-day followers, dude. Holy moly. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Suck me from the back. I don't think your dick can reach that far. Let's be for fucking real. Obviously, you're doing a lot of baby dick activities here, so... Call it your fuel. I don't know why you're, like... You're, you're literally LARPing in here as though you understand a singular thing about Israel. Israel's demographics, okay? I believe it's the plurality. I don't know if I've gotten the numbers correctly. But you keep mentioning only 25% of the Israeli population is Arab. That is because you're using the state's designation. Okay? The state's designation considers that, uh, that Arabs... LARPing? I spent 18 years in the Middle East? Yeah, the difference is you spent 18 years in the Middle East as a fucking colonizing little piece of shit. I spent 18 years in the Middle East living there. Okay? As a Turkish person. That's the difference between you and I, you dumb fuck. Imagine being fucking, imagine being Irish and black, if you, as you claim, okay? Two different backgrounds, very distinct backgrounds that have genuinely been victims of colonial violence only to fucking perpetrate it so aggressively. I don't give a fuck what your background is. I don't care where your masters are from. You're just a dumb fuck in this situation. A dumb fuck that misunderstands everything that's going on, okay? In a country that you have lived in, apparently. You keep pointing to this. 21, around 2 million people are Israeli citizens classified as Arab. Some identifying as Palestinian, including Druze and Circassians, all other Muslims, Christian Arabs, Armenians. Okay? There's two distinctions in the Israeli demographics. There's Arab and there's Jew. Okay? This is, however, incorrect. It is not the full picture. Okay? The full picture is... What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to describe to you, is that there are Arab Jews in Israel, okay? They are still considered Jews under the state demographics. Come on, where's the fucking percentage? We've looked at this before, I can't even find it. Someone like Itamar ben Gvir, while being an Arab Jew, is considered Jewish and not a part of the Arab population. The Arab population, according to the Israeli demographics, because Israel is a racist ethno-state, Okay, that, that differentiates between Arab Jews and non-Jewish Arabs. Okay? There it is. As of 2005, 61% of Israeli Jews were of full or partial Mizrahi ancestry. Okay? When you comprise it, if you look at MENA, uh, if you look at like uh, the MENA region in general, Sephardim, which is from Morocco and Spain, and Mizrahi, which are Middle Eastern Jews, they make up I believe 48% of the entire population, but they make up 61% of the Israeli Jewish population. Okay? This is akin to saying Trevor Noah isn't black but colored because that's how the South African state defines race. It literally comes down to Israel not defining Jews from Arab countries as Arab. Exactly. It is such an odd thing to come in here and argue about and demonstrate your lack of knowledge on this. Okay? It's also weird to argue on this point from incredibly racist talking points that the incredibly racist apartheid state has designed. This is just like the, the diverse religious background amongst Judaism and shit. That's not what I'm talking about. I still disagree with Hassan that this isn't a religious war. Of course it's not a religious war. Religion is a tool, chatter. Pulling this or whatever. I say, if evil wants to unmask itself, let it. So the whole world can see.